Ting Lu is legal in the latest VGC format, and it is controversial to say the least. I don't like it, I don't respect it, so. Mainly because it's a common Pokemon and commonly uses the move Fissure, a 30% accurate move that one hit KOs if it hits. But what's interesting is the question of why. In a competitive game, people use the strategies that give them the best chance to win. So why have people decided that Fissure Ting Lu is the best way to win? What are the set of circumstances that have made a 30% move so attractive? This has never happened before. People may have used one-hit KO moves as a fourth move on various different Pokemon, but it's never been a top meta threat before. What is different about Ting Lu? First of all though, why is Fissure bad for the game? Fissure is fun when you're messing around with your friends and you get a funny KO to snatch victory. It's not very fun when you're playing competitive. It removes agency and adds a lot of luck to the game, and it's more fun to play a skill-based game than a luck-based game. There is some amount of skill in probability management. One example is using one-hit KO moves to beat Pokemon probabilistically. If there's a strong defensive Pokemon that's tough to break down, you can use Fissure to break it, knowing that because it's a defensive do-nothing Pokemon, you'll have many chances to attack it. That is a valid skillful use case, but unfortunately it's not one of many. For example, if you can position yourself to use Fissure 5-6 to six times in a game, you'd be better off than a worse player who only manages to position themselves for 1 or 2 Fissures a game. Knowing when Fissure gives you more expected value compared to other moves is skillful too, but it's still fundamentally probability. The problem with it is the drastic changes it can have in a game. 30% to KO is around 50% to KO at at least 1 out of 2 attempts. Knocking out an entire Pokemon is a very big deal and the game basically comes down to coin flips. The only real counterplay is Terra Flying and Substitute, otherwise you just have to pray. The fact that you can't really play against it is crucial. You can't make every Pokemon a Flying type, and if your opponent brings Fissure, you're just going to have to hope you don't get KO'd. That's not to say Fissure is bad game design, which is a separate thing from competitiveness. Hyper-competitive players are not the only focus of the Pokemon game, and one-hit KO moves are admittedly pretty funny. VGC does not ban anything at all, and given that constraint, one-hit KO moves are previously handled as well as they could be. They were always one-off moves that you could use to get out of jail, but the cost was so prohibitively expensive that it was never a good or common strategy. Was it still a bad competitive mechanic? Definitely. Even if it wasn't common, at its core, the one-hit KO mechanic is not a competitive mechanic. Throwing up 30% coin flips isn't a skillful strategy. Whether or not one-hit KO moves are good or not doesn't matter a lot when talking about competitiveness. That's a common misconception. A strategy doesn't have to be good for it to be uncompetitive. In the past, Oko moves often don't win, but a lucky player can win one or more games with Oko moves and a so-called better player can't do much about it. People want to play games where skill matters. Whether something that's uncompetitive is also ban-worthy is a separate discussion, but it's why any competitive format that has the ability to ban stuff bans one-hit KO moves. Smogon in most draft leagues, anything grassroots really bans one-hit KO moves. It doesn't add a lot of value, but adds a cheese option where a player can try and get lucky and win. Up till now, the uncompetitiveness of Oko moves in VGC could be brushed aside because it wasn't relevant enough. The pick 4 doubles format is inherently fast, and most one-hit KO spammers don't last long enough to attack constantly for Fissure to be viable. But now, the specific combination of Ting Lu and Fissure has made Fissure's uncompetitiveness finally important, and people hate it. So why now, and why Ting Lu? Ting Lu as a Pokemon is arguably the best defensive Pokemon of all time in VGC. It has an incredible HP and defense stat, and its special defense effectively gets boosted by its ability. This makes it incredibly tough to take down as it has no obvious weakness. Even super effective moves don't one-hit KO Ting Lu. Ting Lu, even without Fissure, is a Pokemon worth fitting on your team because of the sheer amount of Pokemon it can shut down, while also providing support to its teammate. Realistically, you will take a couple or more turns to knock out Ting Lu while also having to worry about its teammate. It can either be a powerful offensive threat that you have to prioritize, or a defensive Pokemon like a Moongus who can put you to sleep or heal Ting Lu with Pollenpuff. At the most recent tournament in Fort Wayne, 4 out of the top 8 teams had Ting Lu on them, with 2 out of those 4 having Fissure. Fissure Ting Lu is decently popular in ladder play and was popular throughout the top 128 of Fort Wayne as well. The key thing to understand is that Ting Lu is independently a good Pokemon and will see usage throughout the format. But looking at Ting Lu, what options do you have? You have some options like Earthquake, Ruination, maybe Throat Chop or Heavy Slam, some pretty average stuff. Ting Lu also has the move Stomping Tantrum, which doubles in power if the previous move fails. 
That includes Fissure missing. In a vacuum, Ting Lu using Fissure than Stomping Tantrum is higher value than using Stomping Tantrum two turns in a row, but has more counterplay with stuff like double protecting on the Tantrum turn. Looking at Fissure, it's still a move that hits at the same rate that Scald burns. If you're using Fissure a couple of times, you're likely to at least land one of them. To consider Fissure to be a good move, all you have to do is convince yourself that it gives you more expected value than using any of your other attacks. That's really the key. Ting Lu's other moves are relatively weak and in a vacuum, Fissure plus Stomping Tantrum is directly more valuable than two Stomping Tantrums. Ting Lu is a very bulky Pokemon and it can stay on the field for a long time before fainting and that means it's realistically going to have many chances to go for Fissure. When you're fighting an extremely offensive team, you might be better off going for regular attacks and using Fissure merely as a last resort, but when you're fighting more balanced and defensive teams that you can't break through, Fissure might genuinely be your best way of doing damage and gives you the highest expected value. A good player will know which matchups they have to roll the dice with and only use it in those situations, and a bad player will use Fissure every turn. Either way, you have to deal with the variance of the move because Ting Lu has a staying power to be on the field for multiple turns. Scarlet and Violet notably has a lack of good flying type Pokemon too, which is coincidentally the reason why Great Tusk is also very popular. The end result is that you end up with the perfect storm of Fissure being a viable option on Ting Lu. It's a Pokemon that's tanky enough to survive for many turns on the field, it has the very convenient Fissure Stomping Tantrum combo, and its other moves are so weak that you can believe that Fissure genuinely gives you the best expected value because the opportunity cost is so low. Your other moves aren't doing a lot anyway. The concept of opportunity cost in a do-nothing Pokemon using a high-risk, high-reward move has been seen before. For example, Gothitelle and Bronzong sometimes use the move Hypnosis, a low-accuracy move that can cause a powerful status condition. Gothitelle isn't using Hypnosis because it's backing itself to hit every single one. It's not using it like how Amoongus uses Spore. It's using it because Gothitelle doesn't do a lot. Gothitelle's job is to stay on the field as much as possible with Shadow Tag and just wait it out. Gothitelle doesn't do a lot of damage and oftentimes it can be on the field acting as dead weight. But that's worth it because of how powerful Shadow Tag is. In those situations, you would instead use Hypnosis purely because it's better than doing nothing. You view it as a 60% chance for something good to happen, but you don't expect it to happen. 60% of something good happening is better than the 0% of something good happening if you were using a different move. Also, in the worst case scenario, you can try and luck out of a bad matchup. Fisher Ting Lu is the same way. It doesn't do a lot and it's going to be on the field for a while. Just go for Fissure Spam. Undeniably, Fissure Ting Lu is a common enough move set that you have to be aware of. But is it actually good? There are some dissenting opinions. Nick Navar, a top player and someone whose opinion I respect, talked on stream about how Fissure isn't actually a good move. It's better than Fissure. Uh, Fissure, <laughs> it's not good. It, I'm not saying every sh everyone should be using Stealth Rock instead of Fissure, but like it takes 30% of a kill and Ting Lu has Ruination, which takes 50% uh, of a kill. It's just way more consistent. You can't really plan around Fissure that well. Variance aside, it's just weak. It's not worth running on average. If you high roll it, it starts to get better, but you have to high roll it unsustainably high for it to actually be a good move that's like the most powerful thing you can do. People complaining about Fissure Ting Lu are complaining about Ting Lu because that guy is really, really broken. He's got so many stats and he can sit there forever. Fissure is not what's beating you. Ting Lu is beating you and Fissure is just passively existing. And if you give it six turns, it's going to beat you no matter what it's clicking. Uh, just sometimes with Fissure, it doesn't anyways. And if you want to beat Fissure Ting Lu, don't give it six turns to click Fissure. Take away its time and pressure it. And probably with your own Ting Lu, it doesn't take that much damage from anything else. So you might as well just Ruination through it. Basically, Ruination can give you more more consistent value than Fissure can. It's fun to click Fissure, but Ruination gives you a move that you can actually game plan around and is much more consistent. One hit KO moves becoming relevant is definitely unpopular amongst serious competitors. You can believe that Fissure is a bad move and not use it yourself, but you're still gonna have to fight against it. It's still early and maybe Fissure Ting Lu will fall out of favor, but this format will continue for the next few months and we might even see a similar format in the World Championship this year, which would be very interesting. What do you think about Fissure? Do you think uncompetitive moves are inherently banworthy? Let me know down in the comment section below.